Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd do a quick video on some of the, well, a couple of quick videos, and this is the first of them, on a couple of the teams in the URC now that the season's starting this weekend. Um, just looking at the ins and outs of the teams, and now I, I don't profess to be uh, that involved with every single team that I know how good they're going to do and how well they're going to do the season. Any time will tell. It's going to be an exceptionally long season for South African teams. I thought to start off with, um, let's look at the uh, you know, transfers to each team. Uh, you yeah, know, of the other 10 teams, the South African teams I'll handle in separate videos, but, uh, just who they've brought in and who they've, and who they've lost and what that will impact on them. And we'll start this video with the Italian Scottish conference. I'll do them in conferences. Um, so we'll first do the Italian teams, then the Scottish teams, and I'll do a separate video on the Welsh and the Irish teams. Uh, and separate video on the South African full franchises as well. So keep an eye out for them. Look for them on my channel. I'll be putting them up as I make them. So, yeah, please have a look for them as well. Okay, let's go. The Italian conference, uh, obviously two teams there, Zebra and Benetton. Uh, just going to grab my notes here. Okay, so let's, let's start with Benetton and look at the players that, that have left them. Um, Callum Brady to Northampton Saints, um, Erne Herbst to Harlequins, Erne was obviously an ex-Bulls and the 20 player, he's done very well, he's gone to, to Harlequins, Tomas Baravel has been released, Tommaso Benevuti has been released as well, Tomas Baravel is obviously Argentinian, uh, Luca Morisi, uh, one of the Italian players, is to London Irish, Jay Caputo is to Zebra, uh, Franco Smith Jr., who broke his hand and wasn't able to play for them, has also gone to Zebra. Andres Kutsia has gone back to the Lions, and uh, I had a chat to him on, on uh, this platform. If you look down in, under the Lions playlist, you'll see the chat to him about him coming back. Uh, yeah, and then other than that, uh, uh, yeah, not too, Monty Ione is the other big one. He's gone back to the Mel Melbourne Rebels, and, and that's going to be a big loss for them. So those are the players that have left them. And to come in, they haven't really got that much. Eh? Um, Sam Hidalgo Klein from Exeter, uh, Scott Scrafton from the, the Hurricanes, Anisi Ritave from F Fijian Drua, uh, Marcus Watson from Wasps, and H Henry Stowers from Moana Pacifica. So, some decent, and Ignacio Mendy from the Jaguares. So, some good all round squad depth there, but um, a lot of their the focus has been this season on bringing in Italian players through. So they've brought a number of players from Rovigo and Mogliano uh, who've come into the squad as well, so they're going to be focusing more on local talent and they, they upkeep there. Uh, they'll still be the difficult side that uh, we, we've always seen, but I don't expect them to challenge for top eight honours uh, unless something goes really right and they hit a purple patch, but um, I expect them rather to be in the bottom part of, of the. the Move to Zebra. Now Zebra's got a bunch of guys in and out. A lot of changes there. A lot of Italian players coming in. A lot of Italian players going out as well. Um, just having a look at some of the players who've left them. Asadi Tuivaka has gone to Racing 92 in France. A bunch of players have gone through to Italian sides. Uh, the Argentinian Eduardo Bello has left for Saracens. Liam Mitchell has gone to the, the Wild Knights in Japan. Um, Porto de Avasa, the Samoan, has gone to Manawatu. And the rest of all the guys have gone into Italian clubs. So they've, they've released a lot of guys out of that into the Italian system. And they're obviously looking to shore up with young talent. They've got a lot of young Italian players coming through. Um, but they've made some interesting signings as well. Um, just, just having a look at the, uh, Dennis Fisser from Narbonne. A lot of people might know him, but he's a South African. Uh, they've also got Jacques Dutoy from Bath. MJ Pelser, who was one of the Lions stars and then sort of fell away with injuries and then we didn't see him again. Great fetcher, really talented youngster and hoping he can come through and get, get there because he wasn't getting his chance at the Lions. Jan Ace, who played from, from, um, for the Bulls for a while and went to Grenoble. He's now gone from Grenoble to Zebra. Uh, Franco Smith Jr. has of course come across from Benetton. He broke his hand at Benetton so he didn't get time to play with them. So he is qualified to play for Italy. So uh, that's Franco Smith's son who played for Grey College and uh, was SA Schools as well. Gonzalo Garcia uh, has come through from Argentina. Jay Caputo um, is, is come, come across from Benetton. Benetton. Uh, Quibus from Vike, who you'll remember from the Sharks a long time ago. I think he went to, to I think it was London Irish, one of the English clubs, and then he got released because he had injury problems. But he's he's not attached to any team, and he's now joined up with Zebra. So hoping he's a big, strong winger, big, strong backline player, can play several positions in the backline. So hoping for a good season for him. 
Richard Creel, who you'll remember played for the Bulls for a couple of, a couple of uh, seasons, and yeah, his brother David's still at the Bulls. Uh, he's behind Kurt the Orange uh, and uh, yeah, and and Kanan Moody at, at fullback there. James Eric Verity Am and his brother David Creel's all fullbacks there, so he's not going to really get a chance. So he's going to cross to Zebra. So hopefully he'll get a decent chance there and play some good rugby. Uh, looking forward to see what he does. Um, yeah, and. and and just looking at that, and the rest of them are all Italian players that they brought through. So Zebra, I think, will probably be a lot more competitive. They've got a lot more international players coming through there, but also a lot more young Italian under-20 stars coming through there. Um, but I still don't think they have the depth of, to challenge any of the bigger teams, so it's a lower finish for them. Whether they finish last waits to be seen, but um, I don't think we should expect fireworks from them. Okay, moving across to the Scottish teams, Edinburgh obviously played uh, under Mike Blair a lot more attacking rugby. They've got a lot of South Africans there as well. Uh, yeah, and they, they're looking that ball in hand. You, you can see that a lot more. Gregor Townsend's been sort of punting for that. So I think Edinburgh will be a, a tough team this season to play. Um, whether they've got the forwards, they've got a couple of South African forwards there, but whether they've got the depth to really make it long-term in the competition waits to be seen. They're always going to give it, get, get a chance. They've got some really good backline players. Emiliano Bofelli, when he comes back from the, the Pumas, is, is a star strike player for them as well. And they've got some great Scottish talent there as well. Of course, Pierre uh, Skuman in the front row, uh, Vipi and Nell, a couple of guys like that that they've got as well. And then it's just the who they've brought in this season. So... Nothing too major. The big name that they brought in is Wes Husson from, or Wes Husson, as, as the, the Kiwis say, uh, from the Hurricanes. We all know him as a very talented, sort of great squad player, can play in several positions as well. Um, he, he's going to come in. He'll definitely give a bit of impetus to that back line. Uh, a good squad man, a good team man, and, and obviously has got some quite a attacking flair from his time at the Hurricanes. Uh, other than that... Um, yeah, they brought in Sam Skinner back from a Scott Scott Scottish player back from the the Chiefs, uh, Jamie Jack from from England and and uh, Nick Autorek from Northampton Saints. So and not too much that they've bought. Um, yeah, and, and so so they're going to concentrate on the squad, but I think continuity will probably be the big thing. Uh, the players that they've lost, I think, which 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 will probably yeah. The biggest one name that they've lost that they'll probably regret is, is Magnus Bradbury, who's gone, of course, across to Bristol to play in England. Uh, and uh, he's, he's going to be quite a big loss for them as well. So, um, yeah, but I think all round, I think we can probably expect a mid-table um, finish from them. I'm not sure they have the, the team just yet to, to sort of challenge for the top four. But, uh, yeah, you know, with ball in hand, if they get, if they hit their straps, they certainly are a dangerous team to play. And at home, they, you know, at Murrayfield, at their, their new sta their stadium at Murrayfield, they're really good. Um, so, yeah, I don't expect earth shakes from them, but uh, I could be wrong. And uh, they're definitely an exciting team to watch. They play a great brand of rugby. So I'm interested to see what Mike Blair does this week. Uh, this, this year, sorry. <laughs> Um, Glasgow, well, there's an interesting one. You'll see uh, later on this channel, I'll be re releasing a chat I had with Franco Smith about his move to Glasgow. Uh, of course, we know Franco from, from Italy and from, from Free State, Cheetahs, and he, he likes to play a ball in hand type rugby, likes to play attacking rugby. So we're going to see a lot more of that from the, from, uh, Glasgow this year. Um, I think it's going to take him some time, but I think you'll probably see it come through in the latter part of the season. He's he's made some interesting shifts. He hasn't been there. He only arrived four weeks before the start of the, the tournament. But have a look out for that chat, and you'll see you have more from him about his thoughts on the season ahead. Okay, so let's just look who they've lost. Um, not too many. I mean, a lot of local players have been released, uh, but... Yeah, Tom Lambert to the Waratahs is probably the biggest one that they've lost. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. They haven't lost too many. They've kept the same sort of squad, and they bolstered them with a couple of interesting names. One of them is uh, Hugh Jones, who comes across from Holoquins. He's obviously a Scottish player as well. He, he, the Stormers fans know him very well. He's come back there. He'll definitely give some some um, impetus to their back line. Uh, yeah, a really good player. Sintum and Jersey's come across from the Bulls. Uh, now, I think the Bulls were a bit... Uh, yeah, he didn't really play much for the Bulls, and he didn't play much for the Cheetahs. But when he's played for the Kings, Cheetahs, and Bulls, he's been pretty effective. Great physical lock as well, and, and can play flank as well. But he's had a lot of injury problems. So hoping for his sake, he, he keeps injury free. They brought back Alan Dell, who played SA in the 20s and obviously has played for Scotland a lot, back from London Irish. So, they, so they're bolstering with the Scottish players. Um, and then, yeah, uh, 
Lucio Sordoni um, has come across from Mont de Massan. I don't know him very well, but uh, Argentinian players are pretty tough. And of course, then one of the tallest locks in the game, JP Dupre, who's been playing at Sale Sharks, um, has come across, and he'll give them him and Sinto Majesi can make quite an interesting lock combination for for Glasgow in the in the tournament as well. Uh, they've got uh, one Tongan coming through, Sioni Vailanu. I don't know him very well, but uh, if he's from Worcester, Worcester Warriors, he's come through as well. I think, though, Glasgow, you probably see them edging into into the top six, I'd say, probably of the tournament this year. Um, yeah, I think Frank is going to obviously put his stamp down on, on the whole thing, and we'll see a lot more exciting rugby from them. With that comes the risk, of course, of, of conceding tries, but I think it's something that will come through later part of the season. The first part of the season, they might struggle a bit. I think all these teams in Italy and, and Scotland, their biggest challenge is going to have to be to win in South Africa. Not only Ireland, but South Africa, and that's going to be their downfall if they want to make it into the top four, if they don't find ways of winning. I th Edinburgh was the, one of the few teams that won last season in South Africa, but the others struggled. So, um, yeah. Uh, unless they find ways of winning, yeah, and in, in Ireland, um, you know, any team that doesn't win in South Africa or in Ireland is going to find it very tough to make the top four of the competition. So, yeah, that's their big challenge. Can they do that? They can play great, exciting rugby, but do they have the physicality to match some of the South African sides? That we, we have to wait and see. But it's certainly going to be an interesting season. Thanks for watching this, and uh, keep in, uh, you know, if you haven't already smashed that subscribe button, please do, so you can keep watching more of these rugby videos that I'll put up. And yeah, keep on, uh, yeah, keep on watching them, and let me, let me know in your comments. If I've missed a transfer or two, please let me know in the comments, and I'll have a look at it. And, and yeah, I mean, I'm going off, obviously, the information that we have, and it's going to be a long season. I'll try and put these videos up regularly, and, and we'll see how they go. But yeah, watch out for the other videos. I'll be doing one on Ireland, one on Wales, and one on, one each on the South African franchises coming soon.